Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our webinar on Asia by Rail. We're just having a couple of technical issues. Um, so we are here and hopefully you guys can hear me, um, but just trying to fix it very quickly now. So bear with us for two seconds um, and then we'll be able to get started. Okay, so it looks like it's all working. Um, so it's Nikki, of course, from Rail Europe. So today we are talking about Asia. I'm not necessarily a destination when you think of uh, Rail Europe, but I guess that's um, one of the main messages for this year, which I think I have mentioned on a previous webinar, is that Rail Europe, even with the name changeover from Rail Plus, will still offer all the non-European product. So um, just a couple of other things. This will be my last webinar. So Alicia will be taking over from next month. Um, I'm actually leaving Rail Europe. So if you are in Vic or Taz, then Alicia will be your new rep as well. So we'll do a bit of an introduction with her next month. Um, and if you have any questions at the end, we will send through the follow-up email. Or if you have any questions during, please send them through and Sophia will either assist with answering them or send them through to me. Um, we also have at the moment our, our Rail Expert training program running um, and so if you do want any more information about European uh, content or information that is a program that releases a module once every week or roughly weekly. Um, and I've done the first three and they're really useful. They won't take you a huge amount of time, but the content is really helpful in learning more about European product. So getting into Asia. Um, so we do have a couple of different styles of product that travel through Asia. So we're just gonna cover quickly where your customers can travel to via rail. Um, High-speed rail in Japan and China, just a couple of tips and tricks, and then luxury rail journeys in Asia. I'm just quickly checking to make sure the slides are changing. Um, yep. Okay, so it looks like we're having a couple of technical issues with the slides changing. Um, so I might just have to get Sophia to change the slides over for me. Sorry, this was working perfectly about a half an hour ago. We got in early and tested it. And of course, just before we start, um, it all falls apart. <laughs> So we, Sophia is going to change the slides for me, um, but we'll be looking very shortly at a slide that says, where can your customers travel to? Um, and so this is just a bit of an idea of where we do offer rail products in. Um, so Japan, China and Hong Kong, and then we have for our Great Train Journey products, Malaysia, Thailand, Singapore, Myanmar, and then Central Asia. The next page is just running over Japan at high speed. So if there's any delays in what I'm talking about and what you're seeing, um, unfortunately I can't change the slides from my end. So a little bit not like we would normally want to do it. Um, so Japan high speed rail um, is a very, very popular product, a very popular way to travel around. So we'll be looking very shortly about five facts about Shinkansen trains. So the Shinkansen is the name of the, the bullet train in Japan. Within, It's kind of like, I guess, um, a Boeing or Airbus. So then within the Shinkansen range, there are then a number of different train journeys. 
Um, and the names of the train are pretty much only important for one reason, and that's the validity on the pass. So Shinkansen trains are very fast. They have a maximum operating speed of up to 320 k's an hour. Um, the delays are very rare. You may have seen in the news not that long ago a pu public apology for a the, the fact that a train ran 20 seconds early. So the average delay of a Shinkansen train is less than one minute. There are two different classes offered on board and they are ordinary and green. So ordinary is the second class product and green is the first class. And then very, um, very cheaper, or a much better option for travel around Japan are the passes. So passes can be a lot cheaper than separate tickets. So generally, if the clients are doing Tokyo to Kyoto return, um, a pass would be way cheaper, but it's just, of course, a matter of looking at where they're traveling. And the efficiency, they're definitely the easiest way to travel from city to city. The Japan Rail Network is very extensive and will get them pretty much everywhere. Or JR passes also cover JR buses and boat products. So the next slide we'll be looking at, I'll just have to get Sophia. Um, okay, so it looks like we are having a bit of problems with the slides changing. So we may have to do this a little bit different this time. So we may have to do it with, um, audio only, which is not ideal, but if we disconnect now and try and to restart it, it's going to kick everyone out and then you probably won't be able to get back on. So um, we may just have to do it verbally for a minute. I'll try and guide you guys through um, some of the information that I am talking about and then we will re-record it um, after. So if you do want to watch it again, it'll be a little bit better. So the next um, thing we're looking at is the Japan area for the rail passes. So there are a number of different passes that um, clients can get. The first one is, of course, the JR pass, which covers all of Japan. So this is the best if you've got clients traveling over larger distance. But do remember that there are a number of different passes, including the Hokkaido pass, the Northern and Kyushu pass, the Kansai areas, also the JR East pass and the Shikoku Pass. The brochure this year actually has an amazing map, which really helps to understand um, which pass the clients need. But on the Japan Pass page on the website, we also have all of the different individual maps as well. So if you do have clients traveling to Tokyo and they can travel in that Eastern region, then they can get an East Pass. But the minute they step over into to uh, Kyoto or Osaka, then um, they will need more than one region covered and there's no URL select pass type products. They can't just choose between two regions. It'll be one or all. So yeah, that map in the brochure is going to be really handy for working out where the passes are covered. And if you don't have that brochure, it is available through TIFFs. Okay, so hopefully Sophia is changing the slides for me. Um, we're going through to the Suica card page. Sorry about this, I never, tech never works when you want it to. All right, cool. So Suica card. So Suica card is very similar to an Oyster, an Opal or a Mikey. It's just a preloaded Metro card that clients can use around Tokyo. We do sell these. Um, we send them out preloaded with 1500 yen. Clients can easily add more money locally. Um, they can top it up to as much they need and they can use that around Tokyo for traveling on the Metro services. Do remember this as a, um, as an upsell for your clients because generally they'll probably need one and it's really useful for them to have. And these, of course, we do have physical stock in the office for. The next sightseeing product that we offer in Japan is the airport coach transfers. So these are airport limousine buses. They're a leading operator between the airport and Tokyo. So they're a very convenient door-to-door -door transfers between Narita Airport and Clients Hotel in central Tokyo. So by purchasing tickets before arriving enables them to 
travel to their final destination with ease. So it means that they will have that ticket. They won't have to line up at a ticket line. They can just get on a bus once they get there. So the what we issue is a valid ticket. So it does not need to be exchanged locally. Um, upon arrival, they'll just go to the counter and then the staff will advise them which bus stop they need to head to. For travelling in the other direction, then the hotel reception can just call the airport limousine bus services and request a pickup time locally. So these buses do go either way. And Sophia's just going to give us the next slide. So with Japan passes, um, we do issue a voucher which clients need to um, exchange locally. So they need to take that voucher before their first day of travel and actually exchange it for the JR Pass. This can be done at Narita Airport. Um, it's often one of the more busiest um, airports, but at least that way on arrival it's done. Obviously, depending on what time they are arriving, that office I think opens at 5 or 5.30 in the morning. Um, and at this point, when they do exchange their pass over, they can book in their seat reservations. So seat reservations are free of charge, but they can only be done locally in Japan. So if you have clients that want to book a whole bunch of services, they just need to make a note, make a list for them. We do have a really good timetable website called Hyperdia, and they can um, basically just hand that list over to the attendant when they hand their voucher, and they'll be able to give them the pass and all their seat reservations in one go. Seat reservations are not necessary. There are reserved and non-reserved carriages, but obviously if they are doing one of the longer, you know, four hour journeys, it's best to have a seat reservation booked. The JR passes, like I said before, the Shinkansens have a couple of different styles of product and two of those, which are the two fastest, are the Nozomi and the Mizuho services. So the JR passes cannot be used on these two trains. If clients want to travel between Tokyo and Kyoto or Osaka, just ensure that the schedule you are giving them doesn't mention Nozomi or Mizuho. Again, that Hyperdia website is really handy for working out the product that they are traveling on because it will have it listed there. Um, but just make sure they're not planning a trip on those. Otherwise, they can use their JR passes on other JR services. And the JR passes are for tourist only. So clients need to be entering on a tourist um, entry stamp. If they're traveling on a business visa, if they're a Japanese passport, resident of Japan, then they will not be able to get a JR pass. So just ensure they are actually traveling to Japan as a tourist and they'll be fine with their pass option. So through to the next slide, we are now looking at China. So China, we do have point-to-point um, -point products. And the point to point train tickets are done through the Great Train Journey team. So point to points are not a live inventory, um, so you can't just look these up on the homepage. You will have to contact the Great Train Journey team for bookings. So five facts about China Rail, they're fast as well. Um, so China high speed trains will travel between 124 and, oh sorry, uh, 200 and 350 Ks per hour. Um, and the G trains, which is the name of their fast train, cut more than half the time off the duration of a journey compared to the normal speed trains. So, for example, the G3 from Beijing to Shanghai takes four hours and 48 minutes, whereas the D321 takes 11 hours and 49 minutes. So it's a huge difference. And that's where you'll see the price. You can go into the China page on the website and get a rough guide for pricing. And you'll see the different pricing for the two services. Um, and that's why one takes almost 12 hours and one takes almost five hours. So a massive difference. Um, there is also an extra service between Beijing to Shanghai, which is a normal speed train that takes 15 hours. So we've got five, 12 and 15 hour options. So huge, huge difference. Um, the trains are super flexible. So there are many bullet trains running during the day um, and the clients can just obviously choose the one which is best suited to their schedule. They're punctual as well. Um, so unlike the high delays of rates in China for airplanes, the trains pretty much run to schedule. So they have a really high punctuality rate. Um, and this means because they're less affected by weather conditions or traffic control. So really great options for clients, even over a five hour journey, probably still gonna be faster than flying that route. They're also convenient and comfortable. New and modern facilities on board make China a great place to take rail options. Um, and they can enjoy nearly the same services on airplanes. They can walk around the train and there's also 
high speed internet available on the train that clients can use. So the next slide is just a quick summary of the different types of products. So we've got G, D and C, um, so you two, two different speeds there. They all offer a second and first class. However, G also has a superior class soft sleeper and then the Ds have the soft sleeper and the deluxe soft sleeper. So a bit of a variety. Um, the facilities are similar on the new trains to what they were on the older services. The bullet shaped trains are white. So that's a good way if you're ever looking at a picture, you can tell the bullet trains because they will be white. So the facilities on board include restaurant car, canteen bars, free boiling and cold water, fully air conditioned, adjustable seating and power sockets. And of course that free internet. So China before you go, um, so tickets are instant purchase. We can only do point to point tickets in China and all tickets are electronic. So um, if you have clients who are interested in China, the only thing here is that we can only book them 30 days in advance. So it is a bit of a funny booking process for China. We do have to send them off with payment and then they're confirmed and then they're paid. So it's a bit of a process. So you can send the content or the information through to the Great Train Journey team, obviously earlier than 30 days. And then once the service is available, the guys will go in and book it. There's no rail passes in China, so it is just gonna be those point to point tickets. And the tickets um, are electronically sent to them. So all the instructions, what they need, um, how they get to the station, what they need to do with their tickets, we will be able to provide them also. This is obviously a lot better than the old method of having to have the tickets delivered to their hotel. It was quite a manual process. It could be quite expensive. Um, so at least now we can get the tickets electronically sent to them. So next we will be looking at some of the luxury journeys in Asia. So we first, um, what we offer so we do have a number of products in Asia and beyond. The first product we're looking at, Sophie is just gonna change the slide, is the Eastern and Oriental Express. Um, the Eastern Oriental Express is a Belmont product that travels mainly between uh, Singapore and Bangkok and vice versa. There is also a departure to Chiang Mai a couple of times a year. So there are a range of cabin types available on this train. We won't run over these in full depth. Um, we did of course do the Great Train Journey um, webinar last year and we will have training on it later in this year but just a bit of an overview to remind you those options in Asia. So we have Singapore to Bangkok, um, amazing via the River Kwai, um, they have uh, off-train excursions along the way and this is a really great experience um, and amazing product and often does have companion deals. So if you have clients that are interested in the e &O, look out for the um, sale fares and the companion deals that run quite frequently throughout the year. The next product is the SARS Gold. So this is Beijing to Moscow. It's a privately owned train operating on the Trans-Siberian route that travels via Lake Baikal and all the way through to Moscow. So Beijing to Moscow is a 15 day journey, including two nights in Beijing. And Moscow to Beijing is a 16 day journey, including three nights in Beijing. So a little bit different to your standard Moscow to Vladivostok as this one will travel down through Mongolia, through China, into Beijing. So again, another cruise by rail type product, which includes off-train excursions. The SARS Gold does have a variety of um, cabin options. So everything from your shared berths all the way up to your half a carriage private rooms. Um, we have them all listed on the website. So that one really does offer a product for everyone. So the tour inclusions of the SARS Gold. So they get their excursion to as an all entrance fee. The train will travel along Lake Bacal with two extensive photo stops. They have approximately 40 hours at Lake Bacal. Onboard programs, lectures on local culture, history and everyday life, all meals are included and pre and post hotel accommodation in Beijing and Moscow. So Sophia just send us through the Road to Mandalay slide. Um, so the Road to Mandalay is not a train product, obviously. We do have it in our brochure and it's the one that has the picture of the pool. That pool is not on a train, unfortunately. That pool is on the Road to Mandalay. So the Road to Mandalay is a Belmond product which travels through Myanmar. 
if your clients are interested in the ENO and traveling up to Myanmar, then we can get them a um, combined discount of roughly 15%. So if they do want to do those two products together, there is that discount. So there's three and four night itineraries, all meals included on board, luxury accommodation, cultural performances. They will have different off-train excursions. Basically, these boats will have a support vessel which drives ahead and just checks the river conditions and what's available. Um, one of the really cool programs I love about Belmont trains is that they do have a doctor on board. When they arrive into some of the smaller Burmese um, towns and villages, that doctor then goes sees the locals and gives them some medical um, support and just a couple of checkups and things like that, which I really love. It's just a, a small feature, but yeah, a pretty cool one. So the boat is air conditioned throughout. The ship has four decks and accommodates 82 passengers, all in 43 spacious cabins and are decorated in a Burmese style fabrics. So a really great option. I know it's not a train product, but we do book it. We then have the Golden Eagle. So the Golden Eagle, of course, is rail cruising at its finest. This um, Golden Eagle Moscow to Vladivostok, so still partly in Asia. Um, the train travels through all of the Trans-Siberian area. It has everything your clients need. There are three cabin options, silver, gold, and Bolshoi. Platinum, always forget one of those two. Um, and the largest of the three cabins does basically take up a huge amount of a carriage. So three different options for clients traveling. Um, Golden Eagle still own a couple of other products, but with this one, we are talking about the Golden Eagle Trans-Siberian. It's Imperial, the other one, Sophia just reminded me. Thanks. So we got Silver, Golden, Imperial on the Golden Eagle. So a typical day on board involves Travelling through the night where guests sleep in their cabin. After breakfast, guests whisk away on a coach or minibus to explore included sightseeing tours before returning to the train at the end of the day with complimentary refreshments. So this is not your typical Trans-Siberian Railway journey. This is stopping along the way, having everything included, doing all the off-train excursions in the local areas. Pre-dinner drinks in the lounge cars and enjoying a range of local specialties and international cuisines. And then some days can be spent partially or entirely on board the train, just depending on where they are. And this will give guests the opportunity to watch the landscape unfold and change along Russia. There are also onboard language lessons, local talks on history and culture as well. So just through to the contact page. So for any information about Japan, then you can speak to our info team. So just info at raileurope.com.au or of course our toll free number. And then any information about China point to points or any of the Great Train Journey products, we do have that direct phone and email address with the Great Train Journey team. So gtj at raileurope.com.au. AU. Um, so yeah, that is the contact information, the direct phone number. You can also find that on the website. Anytime you're looking at a product which is done through the Great Train Journey team, then the phone at the top will change and that'll be the Great Train Journey contact. So um, thank you everyone for being patient with some of our technical issues this morning. That is the end of the presentation. If anyone does have any questions, feel free to send them through. If you'd like to email them, we can always respond. If there's anything you need in terms of additional information, please let us know as well. Um, yeah, don't forget about the Rail Expert Training Program. Do check out the specials tab because we have a number of really good deals at the moment. We have a 30% off on Rovis Rail. Um, we have companion fares for Belmond. We have Rocky Mountaineer 2020 launched with their Unforgettable 4 promo. So there's a lot going on in the Great Train Journey space right now. A lot of really great deals for your clients. If you need any additional marketing support, so you want Facebook tiles, we have those in the agent area. If you want videos to play in your TVs, do let us know. If you want assistance with um, flyers or photos or info, anything like that, please keep it, like, get in contact with us, either your BDM or um, directly just through the email that we do send out later, and then we can direct that to the right people. But again, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, thanks to everyone who has come and listened to any of my webinars over the last 12 months. Um, it's been a joy and I hope to see everyone out and about very soon. But if you do have any questions, of course, please let us know. Thank you. Have a great Tuesday and the rest of the week.
and Alicia will be seeing you next time. <laughs>